Hi, Zoe. Hello, Aunt Sophie. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. So today we're going to talk about what you do and who you are. Yes. <laughs> and start by telling us who is Zoe. Well, it's a long story. So I'm somebody that's always been uh, in love with the idea of social cohesion and happiness. And I started as an archaeologist and applied social researcher because I wanted to understand how to create happy, happy societies. So starting with the identity and going into the politics. And then I went and lived with a couple of tribes and they showed me how nature actually works. And I became a permaculture designer because it was so integrated. It made so much sense about food security, which I still apply today. But it did not make the difference I was hoping for in my life, in my my heart is about helping. And then I came across clinical sexology and that was it for me. Clinical sexology, relationship and sex coaching has brought so much joy, not just to my life, but to the lives of people that have come to me that this is what I do now. Can you explain to us what is clinical sexology? Uh, clinical sexology is a process whereby somebody comes in with their sexual concerns and I help them through that so that they can... Uh, become the best sexual versions of themselves without harming themselves or other people. How are you different then from psychologists, gynecologists, like other practitioners? Uh, psychologists work with your why, so they will help you navigate your mind all the way down to the root cause of the problem. And your root cause is usually linked to the 14 generations of education coming through your family tree. Uh, your school education, social education, if you go to church, church education, the magazines, and every experience that you have that you contrast to all this education, which is full of mistakes. I work with how. So you come to me, I peel you, we go through, I, I need to understand where you're coming from uh, at this present moment, and then I give you a protocol to move forward. What are your views on how people see sex clinical sexology how do they perceive it oh we're still whores <laughs> uh we're not we're not well perceived we're still seen as something that's debauched some people still think that we're sex workers when we're not how are you different uh how are we different i mean you go to see it very crudely you go to see a sex worker for sex unless you are a body worker with clinical sexology and in which case you're actually helping people have better sex <laughs> but this is illegal uh, in most countries of the world i literally am talk based and i give you exercises and we have a program plan for you to recover who you are from all the mess you're coming out of recover discover who you are align yourself and thrive which is why we use these four words on our website so throughout your journey what What are the feedbacks that you get from the people with whom you work? They come in with a lot of fear. They walk out with a lot of happiness. Do you have examples, for example? Uh, the, one of the examples I could share with you, most recent. So, 65-year-old man, single, heterosexual, and uh, started talking to him about seven months ago, and he had erectile concerns. And today... I mean, he can, he can hold his erection and make love for an hour and a half. And it's just about making people realize that old age does not just simply happen. It, you let old age happen to you as well. You can be in control of your body. You can have medical conditions and you can work with these. But this is not the end. So now he's feeling so much more confident <laughs> as a single 65-year-old heterosexual man. That's one example. Uh, another example is how this couple of uh, bisexual girls and um, they're in their early 30s. And it's not that they didn't love each other, but physically they were not aligned, not just with themselves, but with others. So when the couple comes to me, I have to treat the people separately so that to make sure that they're healthy within themselves before they discover their dynamic together. And today you're like, oh, we've never, we've never discussed things so well. And you know, this is the kind of happiness I like seeing.
it's very rewarding. So we're not we're not whores. We're actually really like the love Samaritans. <laughs> <laughs> and with what type of people do you work with? Like, what's your target market today? Oh, for me, it's anyone that uh, that has a sexual frustration that doesn't know how to receive. Um, a lot of our society teaches us how to give and be in service to, but doesn't teach us how to receive with as much duty. Uh, so I have people that are referred to me through their psychologists and other people that are uh, strong enough to reach out for themselves. But when they reach out for themselves, they usually come at the end of the tether. It's like, I don't know what else to do. So I'm taking a chance on you. <laughs> so um, I've... Uh, I saw on your website that you are also having like these workshops for corporates. Yeah, so you're right. The, the House of Relationships has this entire universe for the intimate uh, dynamic. And in the, the corporate dynamic, it has to do with gender inclusivity and uh, neutralizing potential for sexual harassment. So on the, the gender inclusivity, I really try to break the stigma and make people understand what sexual orientation is, how it develops. Yeah. Um, and I try to shatter everything that they've been taught. And um, on, the, on the sexual harassment side, it's so ambiguous. And sexual energies are used in the workplace for professional advancement. And it's at the detriment of the company's goal. The company has a target. If you're in teamwork where sexual energies are at play, you don't get the job done. You don't get the job done well. So I have a program to neutralize this for any company that feels confident enough to take it on. All right. And then I saw also that you, you organize events. You like to sing. I love to sing, but I use the stage to share information I couldn't otherwise, and also to a larger crowd, because I think that sexual health and well-being, planetary sexual health and well-being, is not very, it's not on the agenda, and yet it's so important. It has repercussions on everything else. So that's one of the reasons I do events, but I, I also just like to partake. <laughs> <laughs> and you also organize online retreats right yes online retreats they can be corporate or private so whether it is us organizing a retreat for the open public or it's a group of friends please don't be more than 30 <laughs> they, they want to explore something over a weekend we can organize a retreat for you for corporate it really is guided towards the dignity in the workplace and the annihilation of uh, sexual harassment but you have to be brave because my <laughs> tools are quite direct. I want to cut through the chase. I, political correctness, correctness, yes, I use it, but to a certain extent, when I can break that boundary, I will break that boundary. All right. And if someone feels like they need to talk to you, they need to reach you, how, how, how do they do that? And how do you work? Okay, so we work online. Uh, it's important to take the person from their zone of extreme comfort, not just the comfort zone, but if it's underneath your bed with your pillow and your quilt with your phone and you're talking to me, I'm fine with that. You just start from that point. Um, so we have Facebook, <laughs> we have LinkedIn, we have Instagram, we have TikTok, we have Snapchat, we have Twitter, and we are online. <laughs> So you can come to our website and reach us through one of the services. You just fill in the questionnaire because it filters a lot of perverts out. And whatever you're giving me in the questionnaire, I know that if I'm not the right person for you, I will refer you out to somebody who can help you. And uh, on the YouTube channel, you can just drop in stuff in the comment or send us comments in general. And we can actually make more videos so that your question does not just benefit you, but benefits everyone. And what message would you have for people who are still hesitating? Like they are so, you know, they, they, it's still taboo for them to talk about it. I am the tomb that they've been looking for. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's one, I'm Sophie, let's be clear. From the moment we're born, we know that we're going to die. 
and it's so important to value that smile you want to have when you die and fear a lot of the time fear is the thing that stops us from living a life to a fullest so it's nice to know fear tells us where our limit is but if they don't take action they will remain in that spot forever so come with your mountain and i will transform it into a grain of sand wow that's what I hope anyway. And if I can't, I'll find somebody else to smash it. Okay, now everyone, everyone needs to reach you out, I think. Well, I'm here. And if, if I can't be the one, somebody else will be. All right. Thank you, Zoe. Oh, thank you so much for today. Have a nice day. You too. Thanks. <laughs>